There is some who have only heard the legend of Larry Bird. Here's Magic, off the mark. Lakers have several chances, and here's Larry Bird. His career lasted 13 seasons. I guarantee you I'll give 100% every time I come out. And if I get a torn toenail or something, I won't sit out. I'll play as hard as I can every night. And I hope I can bring excitement to the fans and I'll never give up. Shooting, passing, rebounding, defending. Larry Bird would put fear in me and everyone else. Feared by his peers, respected by his rivals. Everyone remembers Larry Bird, the iconic score. And I remember one of the first practices um, he told me and Reggie Lewis, he said, I want to play you guys one on two. This is probably the best defensive unit out there for us. Bird with the pass to the legs of Sigma. Then when we started playing, he was cooking everybody, but talking sh and telling them about it. Push that in the can. Only two other players won the regular season MVP award three consecutive times as Bird did, Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. The interpretation, another steal by Bird. Larry earned three consecutive MVP awards. The Celtics are on a roll. I never put on a uniform to go play a game. With three seconds, I put on a uniform to win. Bird will try another jumper. Bird has 60 points. Larry Bird scored 60 points. Look at the Boston players mob him. Larry Bird scored 60. He was one of the greatest players to ever lace them up. The Celtics never had a losing month during the regular season when Larry Bird was in their lineup. He was that kind of player, that kind of influence. He played in the most physical era of basketball. Your era, it was so much more physical and stuff was just settled on the court and it was fine. When toughness was required. In the 80s when I played, there was a lot of cheap shots and a lot of it happened after a whistle. When you're going in and you get fouled and a guy goes ahead and tries it, that's a free foul. He gave everything he had all while hanging three banners in the rafters. There's something about those banners in the rafters. Diving for loose balls, sacrificing his body and longevity for immortality. I can't change my style of play. I gotta play like that every night. Renowned for his shot, remembered for his iconic moments. Not just the ability to pile up numbers, but the ability to come through in the clutch and under pressure. Larry, legend. And the fans started chanting, Larry, Larry. Larry Bird comes from French Lick, Indiana, a small rural town with a population of just over 2,000. He could play, but he didn't have NBA stamped on him. He was 6'1", 135 pounds, super slow, <laughs> but he could play. Growing up with an alcoholic father and in one of the poorest areas in the nation, Bird's future looked bleak. But like with many of our greatest athletes, the pressure of poverty and despair forged a diamond in the rough. Well, my confidence came from me shooting basketball by myself for hours upon hours. Uh, I didn't pick up the ball on a Saturday and decide I was going to score 40 a game. You could always count on a full house. We had uh, 27, 2,800 people in the town of French Lick, and our gym held 2,300. So, uh... Bird sprouted to a height of six foot seven. It was here, in a closed-knit community, that Bird acquired the work ethic and value that would build a Hall of Fame career. He averaged 30 points and 20 rebounds a game. Well, I was always a, a very good rebounder in high school and college. I was always able to rebound. I always had a, the ability to, to seek out the ball and go get it. This is bird country. Oh, this is bird watching country, but this is a rare bird. When Larry graduated from Spring Valley, he did what any good Hoosier basketball player wants to do, play for Bob Knight at Indiana. At first, Larry attended Indiana University. But at age 17, Larry Bird had never been more than 50 miles away from home for longer than a weekend at a time. His stay in Bloomington lasted just 24 days, saying he felt lost and out of place. The local hero was headed back home. He returned home, a disappointment, 
to his family. I let my mother down. She didn't talk to me for two months. But it didn't matter what other people said. To this day, I don't care. After dropping out of school at Indiana, Bird worked as a garbage man. He was working for the city streets department when he got the news that his father had taken his own life. I was madder after the funeral because I thought he sort of cut out on us during a, a tough time. But, you know, he went, he went through a lot in his life. An assistant coach from the Indiana State Sycamores refused to let Larry quit, pursuing Bird until at last he committed to return to the court. Bird headed to Terre Haute in ISU, a school that never so much had been to the NCAA tournament. Great pass. Oh, and that's up. Bird quickly made up for lost time. The first thing they say, well, they don't play nobody down there. Once I started playing, it's the same old thing. You know, he's at a small school and he ain't playing against anybody, <clears throat> which is fine. Still dominated. I started making these wild passes. And... Oh, back to third. Great pass. Oh, what a play. Larry was a phenomenon. A big man who could shoot and pass like a guard. This is bird country. Oh, this is bird watching country, but this is a rare bird. The 33, the center, a six batter and a half. The way that um, I came in there and set out my year and nobody really heard about me, and then all of a sudden... Oh, the jump shot is coming there. He's looking for it. What a pass! What a pass! The press and, and the media come from all over to Terre Haute to watch it watch our team play, I think that that caught everybody by surprise. You are looking in on a very frantic Wabash Valley area. This is the first time that Indiana State Sycamores have ever been on national television. And are they ready? They think they're number one. It was good for the, the college, it was good for the community, and it was good for the players, it was everybody involved. It, it was just something that happens once in a while. Bird comes up with it, puts it up, and it is good! In 1978, Bird was drafted by the Boston Celtics. Bird was a junior at the time and had committed to returning to college for his senior year. Most teams weren't willing to draft a player who wouldn't play for another year. They could draft you a year early. That's he right. went back to school. The Celtics took, took Larry with the sixth pick, if I'm not mistaken, in 78. The year before. Right. And he went back to school. That's right. Basketball's secret weapon was no longer a secret to the rest of America. The Sycamores, who were unranked in the preseason polls Larry's senior season, breathed through the regular season unblemished. In his senior year, Larry Bird showed the Boston fans why he was worth the wait. Gave it to Bird. Bird. Oh! He led the unknown Indiana State Sycamores to an unbeaten season, 33-0. He's player of the year, Sports Illustrated, all the magazines got he on the cover. Right. Bird mania grip the college basketball world. I think he was a mystery to the extent that, that that he wanted to be a mystery. He didn't enjoy doing interviews, he didn't go out of his way to do them, he wasn't particularly good at them. I start to read materials that were very quiet and you don't enjoy talking to newspaper people. Well, you know, there's different kind of newspaper paper people. Uh, there's uh, people that try to push you, you know, the people try to get things out of you. Things don't even pertain to basketball, and then the type of people I like to stay away from. Bird had become a national sensation as he led the unknown Sycamores to an unbeaten season and transformed them into college basketball's miracle team. Larry Bird and the Indiana State Sycamores. Bird leading the way with 23 points. The first thing we wanted to happen was Larry to touch the ball. And that was our goal, was to get it in his hand 75% of the time that we had it. And, you know, it worked. Larry carried his team to the national championship game. And the dawning of a historic rivalry was set to take place. Prior to, prior to that NCAA tournament, still with the most watched NCAA finals game, in, in, in NCAA history. It was the most celebrated confrontation in college basketball history. Six foot nine inch senior from French Lake, Indiana, Larry Bird. In my case, people really didn't see me play on national TV. I was from a mid-major uh, school. We were undefeated and we were playing against a, 
a Big Ten champion, and uh, I think it just caught everybody's attention. Number 33 at guard, six foot eight inch sophomore from Lansing, Michigan, Urban Magic Johnson. Michigan State was a perennial powerhouse. Their superstar, Magic Johnson, was poised to be the number one pick in the draft. You know, in that game that we had, still the highest rated final in NCAA history. To go back inside. Bob Heaton is not a god. He can play god and play god. Bird inside. Oh, beautiful. College basketball's player of the year, Larry Bird. And Basketball's Bird. miracle team. And they hadn't been ranked since. That's right. <laughs> and they weren't ranked before. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and we, we put two guys on it. We right. double teamed them. Right. Anytime Larry Bird touches it, there are about three people in this area. I'm surprised they didn't play a box on one. You know, four guys on Larry and one on the other four. Because that's they didn't have a lot of talent. Bird kicks it in. Larry Bird using his left hand. Remember, he has a broken left thumb on that left hand. Bob Heaton. Rebound Donnelly. The secondary players are not hitting that perimeter shot. Oh, Bird! Though he came up short of winning it all, Bird had established himself among the fans. <laughs> it's all over! Michigan State University, national champions, 1979. Imagine not only were you a leader on offense, I thought you did a great job on Larry Bird in the zone denying him the ball. How fitting. He goes to the Celtics, <laughs> you go to the Lakers, and we know this rivalry in the 60s, that, that, that was the basketball. A statue was erected in honor of Bird's historic college run. Bird had been drafted by Boston in 1978 as a junior eligible. His impact on the Celtics was immediate and palpable. When I first came to Boston, uh, they had uh, a couple bad years there, and it was sort of rebuilding time. Uh, they came in with a new coach, and uh, I didn't know what to expect. All I wanted to do was go out and play every game and play hard and see what happened. National Basketball Association, in its 33rd season, is troubled by diminishing crowds and declining television ratings, signs that fan interest may be waning. The NBA was struggling as viewership plummeted year after year. One of the rule changes that the fans are so interested in, of course, is the three-point play this year. It's going to add, add another dimension. It's going to be exciting to the devil, actually. Bird made the jump to the pros, joining the Celtics, who had drafted him last year. Excitement for Larry's pro debut was intensified. But uh, once I got to the Celtics, I, the one thing I really remember about the first game is somebody lit a dove out or a pigeon, a white bird. And I knew right then that uh, it was something special. When Larry Bird made his NBA debut, a fan released a dove, which majestically flew across the garden. And the fans started chanting, Larry, Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. Larry Bird comes into a standing ovation here at the Boston Garden. He was a savant on the court. Like, just a savant, like two plays ahead on everything. Down the lane, between the legs, the Norby Bundy foul. Oh, we gotta see that one again. Anointed as the team's savior, Larry would indeed salvage and restore the pride of the Boston Celtics. Bird along the baseline, underneath to Maxwell. The Celtics were a last place team, fresh off their worst season in 30 years. There he is, oh, you're fresh. Right. <laughs> they look to Bird as a savior of sorts. Diving for loose balls, laying it all out. Who knew this 21-year-old kid from Indiana would be the cornerstone for a franchise and help elevate the NBA to new heights. Celtics have got three seconds, two. It's good! Yes, indeed! It didn't take long for Larry's all-in attitude to endear him to fans. Number 33, Larry Bird. Seven-foot shot is still working, and there's the Bird. Could be uh, Rookie of the Year and maybe most valuable player. He's also the leading scorer of the Celtics now, 21.5 points a game. Would you wish Larry Bird... Uh... I think is the best. He's just the very best. Oh, what a bird! Involving all of his teammates, 
the Celtics saw a dramatic turnaround from the year prior. Leading the Celtics to the largest single season turnaround in NBA history. The 80s looked bright for Boston. Thanks to the star power of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, the NBA was soaring to new heights. I think the adjustments have come pretty quick, and uh, I'm very happy with uh, the way things turned out in Boston because it's been very easy. All I do is show up, play basketball, and things have been going well on the court, and uh, so everything else takes care of itself. The Celtics have lost only 18 games all year long. The Celtics won 61 games in Bird's rookie season. The year before Bird's arrival, the Celtics had gone 29 and 53, but. With Bird as a rookie, the team improved to 61 and 21, capturing the league's best record. Bird averaged 21 points and 10 rebounds a game that season and was voted Rookie of the Year. He had turned the franchise around. His clutch play would become the stuff of which, well, legends are made. Bird was named Rookie of the Year, beating out Magic Johnson for the honor. It's always great to play with great players. It makes the game a lot easier. Uh, the one thing that we did my second year, we picked up Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale. In 1980, when the Boston Celtics traded for Robert Parrish and a draft pick which became Kevin McHale, no one could have imagined the glory and camaraderie to follow. Tiny to Bird, behind the back to Parrish. To support Bird, the Celtics acquired Robert Parrish and drafted Kevin McHale. Brito Box could be the greatest GM ever was. Quickly ahead to Bird, behind the back move. Dumps it to Parrish, yes! Kevin McHale's don't come around very often. True. And Robert Parrish. And... With Bird setting the tone, the Celtics played with furious intensity. Score the goal. He was the key that made the team run. The best player on this team without question was Larry Bird. Bird's game elevated even further in his second season as he got his NBA legs beneath him. Suffice it to say, there may never be another front line to compare in greatness with the big three of Bird, Parrish, and McHale. Oh, there's Max on the offensive board on the cut to Bird. Reverse layup is good. How did he make that one? I want to tell you, I didn't think he was going to shoot it. We had a team there when we won in 81. I thought we was going to win five or six in a row. We had that much talent. Boston seemed destined for a title. His first championship, how does he get there? All right, let's see where Quinn goes with it. Larry posts up to the hoop. Yes! In the playoffs, Bird quieted any concerns about the Celtics' youth and inexperience. 1981. Larry Bird, 24 points, 10 assists, and he just makes it look easy. Sweeping the Bulls in the first round. Larry Bird. Bird in there again with another rebound. He has 17 of them. 1981, averaging 24-13-7. The Celtics were primed to make a run at history. What a pass by Bird! Did you see that? Larry Bird! Unbelievable pass! But Dr. J's Sixers seemed to have the Celtics number. Bird Celtics found themselves down three games to one. It was time to put up or shut up. But that title and their hopes for a new Celtic dynasty are in jeopardy tonight. Down 3-1 to Philadelphia. Any adjustments made from game four to game five? From game five on, the Celtics seemed like a new team. Game five, Larry Bird had facing elimination. 32-11, 5-3-2. and two. For Bird, impacting the game on both ends was paramount. Collins pulls up, Bird with a rebound and a loop. Fighting for rebounds. It's over, the Boston Celtics, who are down by six points with 1.28 to go, and Bill fixes a winner tonight. Right. 
Every time somebody puts out a top five that doesn't have Larry in it, I kind of go, what are we doing? You know, I think we sleep on him because he wasn't the highlight dunker. He was amazing. And we were uh, down 3-1, and we won game five in Boston to go 3-2. An incredible atmosphere, electricity, capacity crowd. Game six, he had 25, 16, 4, 2, and 2. Down by 12, they need a rally. There were five games decided by, I want to say, seven points in that series. So we knew it was going to be nip and tuck all the way to the end. Bird goes up, the basket counts to the foul. Larry Bird. Man, I really miss 80s basketball. Another time. The Celtics try to keep it alive. Tempers were hot. And now Dawkins and Rockin' said, don't mess with me, and Madden has to break him up. Yeah, he just does the shooting part, but he does the, uh, the workman's part. Uh, that's, that's why the man is so special. He, he, he plays this game with such total dedication. Bird, rebound, basket good, and a foul. Rockin' said, Caldwell Jones, and that'll do it. The game is over. Boston has won. Storming back to tie the series, Larry had forced a game seven back in Boston. And with this victory, Larry Bird, who paced Boston with 25 points and 16 rebounds, could feel a definite shift in momentum. We felt it really shocked him and really uh, tore him apart because now it's three to three and we're coming back to the garden. And that was just a game. Whoever had the most guts and the most determination was going to win that game. Go back to Boston, and there's people. Like, there's the, the like I didn't realize that, because I'm, I'm new to Boston. It's my first year being out there. Right. 18 minutes before the game, we went out to warm up. There wasn't an empty seat, and there wasn't one person standing. And they stood the whole game. It all came down to one game. The Boston Garden is a curious mix, void of modern conveniences, but equipped with a brash personality. The Boston Garden tucked between the Central Artery and the old Madison Hotel. They're down 3-1 in the series. And game seven, 23-11, 5-5 and 2. And you mentioned Larry Bird. When it comes down to the crunch, he's always there. So far, he's been the outstanding player of the series. You can't play much better than Larry Bird as well. The 76ers got out to an early lead once again, but Bird willed his team back. He had the ability to lift his game to an even higher level just when his team needed it the most. Larry Bird, another offensive rebound. Nothing could stop Bird at this point. It's off, they go to Bird, isolated with Jay, spins around him. Yes, sir. He was on, and when Bird was on, the Celtics won. Bobby hitting outside, and no good. Bird the rebound. Boston will try to tie it under three minutes to play. Larry Bird going to the basket. Foul. He's fouled as he goes in with 251. Bird carried the Celtics across the finish line, making clutch play after clutch play. Bird's foul shots, not the score at 89. Goes in, misses. Here comes Bird out of the pack. 105 to go. Larry Bird. Celtic domination was attributed to Larry Bird. And the Celtics lead. It's the outside shot. You have to hit the outside shot under these conditions. Who virtually will the game in Boston State. The win sent the Boston fans into a frenzy. Here it is. They come back and win, being five, six, and seven. A scene unlike any you could ever see today. Tremendous emotion, a great series with great players. You couldn't possibly ask more from basketball. Now Houston's waiting for Boston. That also will be a great series. That was probably the best games I ever played in my life. It was a seven-game series, and every one of them was just full of excitement. Santa Joseph's over the road, 1980.
Coming back from the brink of defeat, Bird and the Celtics had overcome a three to one hole and were headed to the NBA Finals. In the finals, the Celtics would face off with the Houston Rockets. Boston would like to cut this to a one-point game. Larry Bird has been outthinking opponents all season long. The variety of categories in which he leads his team is evidence of his remarkable all-around skill. Larry Bird. Follows his own shot. That was the spark as Bird took control of the game in a dazzling display of all-around skill. In just his second year, Bird had taken the last place Celtics all the way to the top. And then game six of the finals against Moses and Houston with the title on the line had 27 13 and 5 47 you see the tie Archibald Henderson on him Tiny will come back out and reset 12 seconds on the shot clock Larry Bird wants a three-pointer a three-point shot by Larry Bird he's hit three of them down the stretch I don't know if you can have any more ice water in your veins than he's shown in this game 27 points for Bird You see two seconds, one, and the world champion, the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics have won the world championship in 1981, and they have become the 14th flag winners for the Boston Guards. 81 was a big thrill. He, it was a tough series. Moses was on a tear all year. And, and, uh, you win that first championship, that's, that's very special. For Bird, it felt like just the beginning. For the 14th time, the Celtics have brought the NBA World Championship home to Boston. And thousands of fans mobbed Logan Airport this afternoon to greet the young sports heroes with champagne, beer, and cheers. They celebrated the title in style. Thousands flooded the streets to cheer the Celtics. Whoever said winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Apparently had today's citywide celebration in mind, where estimates of 40 to 50,000 screaming fans showed their appreciation. When we won our first championship, I, I told our team, I said, we got to win at least four or five of these things or we didn't do our job. I always thought that we left him on the table. Well, I spent about two minutes up in Mayor White's office, and all them people up there dudes running around asking for autographs. Now I know why they're on bankrupt. After we won the championship in 81, I feel like we had a good enough team where we could start a, a, a destiny and, and win a, a lot of championships. Unfortunately, there for three years, we didn't do much, but from 84 on, we played pretty well. He was the biggest star in the sport. Uh, you know, every time you pick up a magazine, there's an article on Larry Bird. I, the one Sports Illustrated comes to mind. It's a living legend. The next season, the Celtics were the best team in the regular season. Today from the spectrum, the Celtics shooting for their 15th win in a row. 28 seconds, Bird, slap pass to Archibald. Probably with a little off balance. Bird with the steal behind the back to Nate Archibald. Back to Fantastic. Because I feel that if it comes down to the last shot of the game, I should be the one to be able to take it. Count it down with me. Bird had become known as the best Bird closer in the game. Maxwell. Max puts it on the floor. We're down to six. Bird in the corner. Double fake. Good! Larry Bird hits it with two seconds left. A killer who thrived in the clutch. He had a quality that went beyond his skills. He was a winner. He was a champion. Larry with the break in the middle. Bird a runner. Yes. Bird was better than ever in the postseason. Finds Bird. 
Won't go. Earned the rebound. Over his head to McCann. Probably making a pass that, like I say, is a group of people standing there and, and think about it in your mind and all of a sudden doing it. He had the ability to lift his game to an even higher level just when his team needed it the most. And that's what defines greatness in any athlete. Not just the ability to pile up numbers, but the ability to come through in the clutch and under pressure. The Celtics ran into their rival, the 76ers, yet again. The plan for the Boston Celtics was uh, the highlight of my, my whole um, life. That's good, maybe Jay, and Jay gets it started. But there's the first basket of the game. And there he, he holds down a lot of his talent to uh, benefit the team a lot, too. And Strong move to the hoop by Larry Bird of the Celtics. Despite court. another great series from Bird, it's three on one, Irving. The Celtics would come up short against Dr. J's 76ers. The Sixers are now within nine. Kale will put it in play for the Celtics. 2:20 left, third quarter, 81-60, Boston. Kale will put it in play for the Celtics. 2:20 left, third quarter, 81-60, Boston. Bird is the man. Fall away. Oh wow! In a moment that highlighted the Boston fans' disdain for LA. They cheered the 76ers in the garden. And then something unique happens. From the Boston crowd comes a ceaseless pounding chant. Kobe. You hear the crowd is chanting to the Sixers? Beat LA. Beat LA, that's great. Let's listen. Jim Harrington, executive producer. Michael Burks, our producer. 82, I still feel like. Uh... That was one of the lost titles from that era. We always had good teams, yeah. and it always seemed like injuries got in our way, which it does for a lot of teams. The 76ers didn't beat L.A. Magic Johnson, Bird's rival, had captured a second title. I grew up, as we all did, being a Laker fan. Yeah. You know? But I patterned my whole game how I wanted to play and approach after this man, yeah. Bird was hitting his prime. Uh, he keeps getting better and better. Larry Bird. And when uh, that little picture machine starts going off, he's in the world of his own. Oh, the <laughs> and Maxwell converts. It counts in a foul. And that was a heads-up spectacular play by Larry Bird. And uh, there isn't anybody in the world that's going to stop him. And uh, when he gets it going like that, uh, it's awesome. It was so much fun to play with this guy. First of all, you, you get yourself involved in a game, and this you would get caught looking at him as he performed, and it was strictly a, a, a performance. It's a two red-hot teams. Larry Bird on a steal. Double team, and Bird knocks it away. To Orchestrating the offense and attacking on defense. Bird was quickly becoming the most dominant player in the league. Bird. Wow. I want the ball because I'm supposed to produce them situations. Uh, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but uh, I want the ball in a crucial situation. The baseline on the sideline and the guy just gets it and lets it fly. But All right, Max is going to inbound to the Celtics. Whoever catches that ball is going to have to put it right out. Max looking, looking. It's good! It's good! And the Celtics win it! Bird hits and the Celtics win it! 103 to 101, a three pointer by Larry Bird at the buzzer. So that thing which we sometimes think of as a cliche, that the great player is not just a tremendous performer himself, but that he makes those around him better, applies here. I think it's the epitome of that statement when you talk about Larry Bird. He absolutely makes everybody around him much better. Ball gets lulled in for uh, Bird. Dallas. Uh, Allen. Ahead to Buckner, the left-handed right. Larry Bird. He's really... He's been on a roll, hasn't he? 33 points. What's he got, 16 rebounds, Ray? 15 rebounds, okay. Get the interpretation. Another steal by Burr. There he goes. The Celtics are on a roll. 
Larry Bird puts the Celtics ahead for the first time in the game. They have scored. 11. But after 5.45 left. Bird the steal. Lead pass Woo. to Maxwell. Say goodnight. So the Celtics increase their record to 18 and 4 now after 22 games. The Celtics look like contenders again. Welcome to the NBA playoffs on a USA cable network. But Milwaukee with a 3 0 lead. And many of the fans in Milwaukee walking around with brooms tonight. 1983. He was swept by Sidney Moncrief in Milwaukee in round two. The Celtics watched most of the playoffs on TV last year because the Milwaukee Bucks beat them badly. The Celtics were swept by the Bucks, and the dream of a Celtics dynasty was quickly ending. In his first four years, Larry had brought the Celtics back to the top of the NBA. But by the 1984 season, it had been three long years since he'd won a title. The future was now uncertain as the Celtics seemed to be wasting their championship potential. But for Larry, the season would be one of his greatest, becoming the best player in the league and leading the MVP charge. Along with the long hours of practice Bird demands of himself, there are many more demands put on number 33, from the media to living up to what people expect off the court as well as on. Your era, it was so much more physical and stuff was just settled on the court and it was fine. The 80s when I played, there was a lot of cheap shots. And a lot of it happened after the whistle. Like mm -hmm. you're going in and you get fouled and the guy goes ahead and tries it. That's a free foul. Angry and here's Moza. Wait a minute. That's Barkley. Oh, there oh, is. Yeah. And look at Jay it. hitting Bird as he's being held from behind. How good was Michael Bird? Jordan. People, I don't think people, people, people look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's a white guy, he's, slow guy. He's a chubby white guy. He <laughs> wore us out. Round <laughs> two against the Knicks and Bernard King, another guy on our list, averages 30, 11, and 7, including the playoff game of his life up to that point. Game seven against the Knicks in round two. Bird is steal. In the playoffs, the Knicks were extremely physical. Bird is double teamed. The series would go back to Boston for a game seven. Larry Bird takes the first shot of the game. With his back against the wall, Bird had a playoff career high, 39 points. Bird. 17 for Larry Bird. Bird. Three. Larry Bird at 39 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists. Lead is the matchup between Bernard King and Larry Bird, the two vying for MVP honors. Look at that. Fighting it on defense as best he can. The crowd is chanting MVP for guess who? Well, it gets my vote to tell you the truth because he does so many things. On a the Celtics were headed back to the finals, and Bird had cemented his MVP case. The NBA most valuable player is to sum it up in one word, simply the best. And when people look for adjectives to describe this year's winner, many insist that he may be the best player ever. In the finals, the match everyone was hoping for came to fruition. You know, we were the favorites, and we made our way. They won the East, we won the West. So it's like uh, everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. So at least we got the game in our court, and uh, our fans will be hyped up, and it'll be fun. Of course, you had the Bird Magic, you know, take over the '80s. The Bird Magic Celtic Laker Finals were like the Ali Frazier. In each of the last four NBA World Championship Series, either Magic or Bird has competed, but this is the first time that the two have gone head to head for the title. Well, I was excited being in the finals, but playing against Magic, yeah, that, that was. Uh, Something that I always dreamed about since he beat us in college. And welcome to Los Angeles, the city of stars and expensive cars. The 1984 NBA World Championship Series was a media circuit. And then in the finals against Magic and Kareem and the Lakers. It's game four with the Lakers leading the Celtics two victories. Love, Historic struggles between the Lakers and Celtics had defined the NBA. Down to one in game four to even the series. Bird gets the layup. Boy, how he knights his way in. The ratings were off the charts, and the NBA was bigger than ever. And here's Larry Bird with another rebound. He has 11 in the ball game. The tip controlled by the Celtics. 
Here's Bird going for three, and he has it. Now, Magic and Bird were writing a new chapter in the rivalry. He has done successfully. Here's a steal by Larry Bird. And we always felt that if we played the Lakers, we could always do something here to take the heck out of them. Here's Kareem, outlet to Worthy. Rambis. Kurt Rambis was clotheslined by Kevin McHale. I think Larry Bird can beat you even if he doesn't score a point on the basketball court. You get, you get him thinking about if they're going to get hit or, or somebody saying something, it takes them off their game because they like to get it out, run, and, and just keep pushing, pushing. Get, get in their flow. you got to take them out of that flow. Bird fights Kareem. Swings the elbow, and now is yelling at Larry Bird. The Lakers' cool was blown. Instead of setting the tone, they found themselves retaliating, and their well-honed concentration was disrupted. Bird had one of the great playoff games ever played. You know, great players like Larry Bird and Magic Johnson love to be in this situation. Bird went to the line with a chance to tie it up. He makes one. And the Celtics tie it up. The game went to overtime and Bird would be called upon once again in the clutch. They'll have to get more scoring from Wilkes and Kareem before it's over. I don't believe it. And there are Celtic fans high-fiving all over the joint now. And the rebounds, the Celtics 33 rebounds to the Lakers 12. Larry Bird! He has been sensational. The kid from French Lick, Indiana. He's got 31. 18 on the shot clock. I think the Celtics will use most of the clock here. Nearly a steal by Worthy. Dennis Johnson with Cooper all over him. He can't do a thing. Bird, turn around. Hits with 16 seconds to go. The shot proved to be the game winner. Listen, you couldn't give him an inch or he would just shoot it right in your face. He was dominant at both ends of the court. The Lakers arrived in Boston. Mr. Stern comes in in 1983, and he capitalizes on two people. One name was Larry Bird, another name was Magic Johnson. Playing an extraordinary heat, both teams would have to dig deep. Boston Garden was a sauna. The place had no air conditioning. And inside, as the temperatures reached into the hundreds, the Lakers tried to relax and stay fresh. Are entering the hottest place in this city, literally. There is no air conditioning in this ancient building. And the loud and rabid Boston fans cheered them as if on a crusade. How hot was it in here? Game five and game seven and 84 against the Lakers. They said it was 105. Uh, all I remember is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with the oxygen tank to his face. <laughs> the Lakers will have a bottle of oxygen alongside their bench. Larry Bird gets an offensive rebound. Was an exceptional rebound. Averaging 10 rebounds a game for his... The score is tied at 26. The game started over 97 degrees here at Boston Garden inside, and I'm sure that's been raised a few degrees. Bird dominated the rebounds, once again giving his team the edge, turning second chances into points. This is game number five, and a steal by Bird. He just tied two games apiece. And Larry Bird. Bird scored 34 points and had 17 rebounds. By Larry Bird. Gaines finds an open Bird, takes Rambis. in resounding fashion with a big second half have trounced the Los Angeles Lakers 121 to 103. A 34.17 rebound game to go up 3-2. Bird had an extraordinary game scoring 34 points on 15 of 20 from the field and grabbing 17 rebounds. Back in LA the forum was packed. So on a sunny Southern California afternoon, the forum is our city. And the Los Angeles Lakers must win here or this season is history. Usually restrained forum crowd was in a frenzy. They had seen Boston Garden erupt and went all out for the Lakers. From the start, the game wasn't close. The Showtime Lakers steamrolled Bird and the Celtics. The Lakers' win would send the series to Boston 
for a game seven. Los Angeles Lakers have even this NBA World Championship Series at three victories apiece, and they did it in dramatic fashion. And Abdul Jabbar scored 30 points to lead all scores. Larry Bird had 28. A dramatic victory by the Lakers. I thought we played like a bunch of sissies. We just didn't do the things that, that it took for us to win a championship. Everything is back there to be had. History, the Boston Garden, uh, retired numbers, world championship banners. We have a chance to do something that no other team has ever done. Go back to Boston Garden and win a world championship on that parquet floor. The series returned east. The Lakers had lost the home court advantage, which rested now with Boston. Back in the garden, the heat was on. Track of the temperature here in Boston Garden, and it says 91 degrees. That's inside. Outside is pretty delightful, Tom. It's the moment schoolyard players dream about on sleepless summer nights. And tonight, the seventh game of the World Championship, where the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers get ready for the World Championship of Basketball 1983-84. It's game number seven. The fans erupted into thunderous applause. Well, you said it, no question, that Larry Bird, the man the Celtics will live or die with. Tonight. An electric atmosphere. Bird going in. Jack Nicholson does not have as good a seat here in Boston as he does in L.A., Tom. Here's Magic, off the mark. Lakers have several chances, and here's Larry Bird. This game is Larry Bird. I mean, he's doing everything. The steal by Larry Bird. Being right behind Kareem to make the steal. Lakers trying to cut it to one. Again to Dennis Johnson has gone in against Cooper again. And this time he's fouled. And Dennis Johnson hits the free throw. Johnson's free throws gave the Celtics a five-point lead. And now a foul. No basket, a foul is called. They win the title in seven. He's finals MVP. They have two overtime wins in that series. The Celtics had done it. World champs. Final second. Cooper goes to three. It's over. The fans stormed the court. world titles another banner will be hung from the rafters at boston garden bird had defeated his rival magic and helped boston secure its 15th nba championship larry bird was chosen the playoff mvp it's my pleasure to present the larry o'brien trophy to the nba world champion 1984 boston celtics congratulations to red Auerbach. Number 15, what a way to go. He was now the undisputed biggest star in basketball. All your Celtic fans around the country and the whole city, it's it just, it just something that's unbelievable feeling. Because it seems like your team, the team that you're on, brought this many people together in, in, in a short period of time. And it, it's, just a, it's just amazing what a championship can do for me. But it was the extraordinary measure of the man that despite the unusually high standards we judged him by, he so regularly exceeded those expectations. Larry Bird would have another MVP season. Actually, uh, after winning the world championship, after being the MVP of the playoffs, MVP of the league, what an honor that is, MVP of the league. It sure is. You know, after going through a, a tough season like you do, then at the end you start bringing in awards. It's really a great feeling because yeah. you know you accomplished something. Tonight from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, the Pistons host the Boston Celtics. The season is not even a quarter old, but the world champion Boston Celtics are making a mockery of the so-called title jinx. Since 1967-68, no team team has won back-to-back -back titles, but the Celtics seem determined to buck that trend as they stand alone atop the NBA with a 15-1 record. 
Bradley outside on DJ, around a pick, Bird. Yes, and a foul! Bird the steal. Tips it ahead to McHale for two. Well, Robinson the board, and the Bullets can take the lead. Bird the steal. He recorded his 10,000th career point and had pundits proclaiming and him better than ever. Helps out there. Oh. And that is point number 10,000 as Larry Bird has gone over the mark. The Celtic players knew it. That was awful quick, too. It didn't take him long. Sure it didn't. Just a little over four minutes. The ninth player. Some people around the league say that the Celtics actually are playing better basketball than they did a year ago, winning uh, championship banner number 15. And uh, some are also saying that Larry Bird perhaps is playing even better than a year ago. Is that possible? It's possible because he's looking to score more. I always like to take a moment to show young Jordan highlights. The other guard is from North Carolina, six foot six, number 23, Michael Jordan. Dennis Johnson and McHale had a wide open layup. Here's Jordan. Oh. The first true great deep shooter of any year. The first star player that it was truly a weapon for. Bird for three. Oh, it's blowout time. The Celtics were a well oiled machine. You just celebrated your 28th birthday last month, and coincidentally, you were the player of the month in the NBA in December, uh, averaging 27 points a game, 52% field goals, the best ever, 90% of your free throws, getting 10 boards a game, 6 assists, or maybe 7, and also just uh, leading the league in 3-point shots percentage-wise. McHale, no, the rebound of McKenna, stripped away by Bird, gets it to Paris. What a play by Bird. Last year they had it down here, and we had an up year, and we're playing great, and they're playing great. So I look for us to be uh, in the finals to see who plays uh, the L.A. Lakers. The, the way it's going right now, you're going to be MVP twice in a row, maybe the world champions twice in a row. Larry Bird, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greats of all time. DJ again to make the inbounds pass to double team and Bird. Larry, fake, fall away. because I consider myself one of the better shooters in the world. And if it comes down to the last second shot, I would rather be taking that shot because over a period of a whole year, you get in the playoffs, I've probably taken, you know, two or 300,000 more shots than one of my teammates. Now, would you want to go to him or would you want to go to the guy who's taken that many shots over, over that course of a year? So I always feel that I'm the guy they should go to because I feel I'm the guy that's going to hit the shot. All right, here's Dennis, gets it in the bird. Larry, a runner. Got it! Ball game's over, Boston wins! Just how many have seen Larry Bird play? Hey, everybody's seen Larry Bird play. Uh, that's that's not a high enough percentage. We got uh, we got some work to do. Yeah, it's they don't know. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Down low for Bird with position. He fakes it and shoots it good. Against the Hawks, Bird put on an all-time performance. Great touch. Dennis Johnson misses a shot. Rebound, Bird. Bird on the baseline. Oh, great pass. In the ball like magicians. Oh, what a pass. Great. Larry Bird to McHale. Bird on the drive, the runner. Oh. It's good again. Oh. You're seeing a greater performance as you'll ever see from Larry Bird. Bird. They open the right side. Bird the fall away. He oh. drills it again. Oh. That's the best shooting I've ever seen in yes, the game. Yes, indeed. Bird with 52. Right corner, Bird bomb. Burying one impossible shot after another. Hits it again. Bird has 54. Bird set a new franchise record. There's Bird. Bird, 14 seconds. He got fouled. 
He hit the shot. He even had the opposing team giving him cheers. With three seconds, Bird will try another jumper. 60 points. And hit it at the buzzer. Bird has 60 points. Larry Bird scored 60 points. Look at the Boston players mob him. Larry Bird scored 60. It is the greatest shooting exhibition I've ever seen in my life. Bird won his second straight league MVP award. Championship series. The NBA's most valuable player for the second consecutive year on the Boston Celtics, Larry Bird. Uh, the MVP didn't really, after you win one, it, uh, to me it really don't mean that much to win another one. The, the thing that you try to go for is the championships. Because once you, you win an MVP award, it's, it's yourself, you're by yourself. Once you win the NBA championship, the whole city's involved. Ron Anderson in the game for the Cavs in the backcourt, replacing World. The playoffs felt like a formality. Gets around him, puts it up and in, and a foul to go with it. That is vintage Larry Bird. Again, he's the defending champ, comes into the playoffs, league MVP again, averages 35 and 11 with six assists in round one. This guy. The Celtics were on a collision course with the Lakers. Holding oh, wow. And they score the goal. Bird in the lane. That shot 32 is a phenomenal shot. They dismantled the Sixers in the Eastern Conference Finals, but that Lakers team in 85, nobody was beating them. They won the East, we won the West. So it's like uh, everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. And a very pleasant good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen, from the Boston Garden, where the Los Angeles Lakers hope to achieve something they have never done. The Los Angeles Lakers, by winning two of three at home in the new format of the NBA, have achieved a three to two advantage. They want to stifle the Celtics here today and be crowned the 1985 world champions. 107.97, and it's as if no one is at Boston Garden right now. That's how quiet it is. That's got to be the ultimate thrill for the Lakers. Kareem hits again with a sky hook. The Lakers could win their third title, Tommy, in six years. The loss to the Lakers was a sad end to an otherwise historic season for Larry Bird. Must be magic. Now that's who this shoe was made for. <laughs> the Converse Star Tech with the unique unisaddle design. 1986. What many people, not me, but many people consider the best team ever. It's his third straight league MVP. He's going to finish it with another finals MVP. With Bird, the Celtics moved the ball as well as anyone. While most of us were born with five senses, it would seem that Larry Bird has a sixth. And that has transformed the way the Celtics play basketball. Has a team ever passed better? Larry Bird, the hick from French Lick, had already secured his place in Celtics lore. But don't worry when the Celtics return to the road. Their exploits away from Boston Garden have been almost as noteworthy as their near flawless home record. He guided his team to two titles and had won two league MVPs. With a record of 60 wins and 13 losses, these Celtics have every reason to be confident. Today they'll be shooting for their 27th straight win at home. They were playing basketball at such a high level. The Celtics dissected opponents with deadly efficiency. And the shots are so easy when they come off the pass. Nearly 70% of the Celtics' field goals have come that way in the playoffs. He could affect the game in so many ways that he became a force multiplier. Uh, 84 and 86, I thought in 84 we got lucky and, and came back and beat you guys. But in 86 was a team that I thought was our best team in Boston. Yeah, but very little from the inside. Walking to DJ, out to Bird, Larry the runner. I played on some really good teams, but nothing uh, quite like that one. Uh, Bill Walton made a lot of difference. Walton trying to keep it alive. It's going to be this crazy. Celtics team is widely regarded as one of the greatest teams ever. But Bill Walton was the key. Bill came in and, and uh, you know, coming off a lot of injuries for a lot of years, felt relative healthy. 
and we felt if he, we could keep him on the court uh, 10 or 15 minutes a game, we're probably going to win a championship. Kind of skip it through to Bird underneath. Brian passes it to Walton. Back to Larry. Under to Robert. Two! We stayed pretty healthy. I think Bill played in 80 games that year, and uh, uh, we just felt that nobody could beat us, uh, not in a seven-game series. Ropes the sideline, and Larry in the middle, off to Paris. I've always felt that, and, and still feel that that's the best team I've ever seen in this league. I'm sure Magic's got a team he liked to throw up against it, but to me personally, I thought that's the best team ever assembled since I've been in the league. Down and out, Parrish again. And it goes in a foul. Larry took part in the inaugural three-point competition. Looks like he's found the mark, Bill. Larry Bird on his way to victory here in the long distance shootout. To no one's surprise, Larry won. Magic is the one that made us want to play point guard here at the Washington. Bird is the one, he's the first big man we saw shoot threes. Okay. Our winner here in the three point long distance shootout. Chase had my name on it for a week now, and I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing, my teammates said I wasn't going to win it, but I, I came back and uh, lucked out, really. The league was brimming with young talent gunning for the league MVP. continues to play the way he's been playing he'll be on his way to a third consecutive MVP award and there are only two people who have done that their names are Russell and Chamberlain Bird. The first time I came to be a Boston Celtics uh, I'm gonna go out and play and Larry walks in and walks right up to me as if he'd been thinking about me all day he said hey I get all the shots on this team just because Kevin or Chief are not playing, that makes no other opportunities for you. Now get your butt to the weak side and get some rebounds so I can shoot more. And then when Walton showed up, it just seemed like you every game was like you're trying to do some weird thing you've never <laughs> tried at a basketball court. Bird kept it alive to Walton for two. <laughs> Bird played the Blazers left-handed telling them he was saving his right for the Lakers. Portland Trailblazers coming up on the schedule. Larry Bird turns to his teammates and says, you know what, fellas? I'm going to play tomorrow left-handed. Another left-hander by Larry Bird. Goes out there and scores 47 points. Not all of them left-handed, but a lot. Another two points with a left hand to Larry Bird, if you're counting. He's got 31. Away from the ball. Dennis Johnson, 10 seconds the clock. You watch it count down. Blazers up by a point. He dropped 47 on him, including the game-winning shot. Larry Bird with three seconds left, timeout for Portland. 47 points for Larry Bird. Bird would secure his third straight league MVP. You now join Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain as the only players in the 40-year history of the NBA to win the league's MVP award three years in a row. Larry Bird joins an elite club, which only includes Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. It was a coronation for the Celtics and Bird. A dominant season, a dominant postseason. The playoffs would be a mere formality as the Celtics dropped only one game on their way to the finals. They, they, they sweep the Bulls in round one. They beat Dominique in Atlanta in round two. They sweep Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals. So they're 11-1 en route to the finals. Yeah, that, that run was one of, the, one of the greatest runs we ever had in yeah. Boston. And welcome to the aging Boston Garden, an arena that was built back in 1928 for $10 million. 
You probably know this place now as the center of the basketball universe. Here at the Boston Garden where the Boston Celtics and the Houston Rockets get ready for basketball battle in game number one of the World Series of Basketball, the NBA Finals. So welcome to the 1986 NBA Finals. It's the Houston Rockets and the Boston Celtics. The finals were a beatdown as the Celtics were simply the best and no one would deny them their third title. In those finals, they're playing Houston. He averages in the finals 24 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists. Is two total assists shy, I think it was two, of averaging a triple-double for the finals. He has 29 and 12 in game six to win the title. 238 remaining in a tie score. 12 ties and 16 lead changes tonight. Walton, who's been there before. Bird for three hits, and the Celtics lead by three. And who else but Larry Bird? We already lost two games to them. It's uh, I mean, a very talented team, but we were the superior team. They were young, and I didn't think they could ever win two games. Danny and the Walton. Walton hauls it back out to Bird. What? A three point field on the Larry Bird. Now it was up to us to go out uh, as a veteran team that's been there before and play like we've been there before. Closing out the Rockets in six, the Celtics were once again world champions. The Boston faithful were at their best, storming the court, as was the tradition. They win the title in 1984. They lose in the finals in 1985. They win the title in 1986. Bird is league MVP all three years, finals MVP twice. The city of Boston, after all, has put on more post-NBA championship celebrations than any other city. It should come as no surprise that they know how to do it and do it big for a Celtics championship party. I had no doubt that I'd, I'd be here this year, no doubt at all. There's no doubt in my mind that the Celtics would take it all the way. The most successful team in the history of pro basketball locked up title number 16 on Sunday. The theme for the day was Sweet 16. Well, if I was working, I should be working for Edison, but Edison's on strike, and even if I was working, I'd be at this party celebrating oh, Celtic oh, World oh, Champs! Oh, oh. So Boston celebrates once again, and these fans will tell you no matter how many banners are hung in the garden, it never stops feeling good. A tremendous season, a tremendous celebration. Larry Bird carried the trophy high, just as he has carried this team to the pinnacle of the game. The Bird hysteria reached new heights. 87, I went out, Converse wanted to do a commercial with both of them. Okay. I flew out to Friends Lake, Indiana, right. where he from. Converse made a pair of bird shoes. And then we started talking. Right. Like two little boys. Right. And, you know, we, we're, we're similar. We grew up poor. We're both from the Midwest. We love the game. We love to win, you know, on right. and on and on. And that's when our friendship evolved and grew. And we've been friends ever since. More commercials, including several iconic ones. <laughs> One name. Off the expressway, over the river, off the billboard, through the window, off the wall, nothing but net. The Celtics raised their third championship banner of the Bird era. But you gotta love the garden. Where else can you wait in line 36 hours to sit behind a pole? This is probably the best defensive unit out there for Bird with the pass to the legs of Sigma. Larry Legend had solidified his place in history. Push that in the can. Don Nelson wants a timeout. 8.34 and they're on their feet in the garden. Celtics by four. Nissan major motion play of the game does involve that passing skill of Larry Bird. He gets both the awards. But the next year, injuries began to attack the Celtics. The next season would see Boston decimated by injury. Even shorthanded, 
Bird carried the Celtics into the playoffs. Larry will take it. Yes. Mickey Johnson backed off and Bird accommodated. On an Easter Sunday, Larry has got 40. Larry Bird just did a total tune on whoever guarded him. I mean, they try to physical him today, bounce him around. They try to finesse him. Nothing worked. You left the bad blood on the court for the most part, but not with Lambeer. I you never uh, really ever liked Lambeer in any social situation. No. Yeah. And uh, it's because he was a dirty player. Right. He'll try to hurt you. Then in 1987, seemingly exhausted, he has a mo he sweeps Jordan in round one. You know, he was one of the guys, you shoot a jumper, he tries to slide his foot underneath your ankle so you twist your ankle. And that's why Parrish Did always he really used to do that? If you watch any of our old games, Parrish was always twisting his ankle against the Pistons. Against the Pistons, Bird had one of his most iconic moments. Against Detroit, they're tied with the Pistons, 2-2. Oh, ho, oh, ho, ho, Averages, 36, 10, and 7. Bird. Yeah. Including in Game 7, 37, 9, and 9. I want to see how they're going to play the inbound. Are they going to give them an idea of a clear target? I think I writ, wrote one said, uh, out of the 25 greatest moments of my life, I think you're involved in like seven of them. I, I think that <laughs> Bird Steals the Ball might be in the top five. You need to get a better life. <laughs> 17 seconds to go. Bird set to inbound. Boston down one. It comes to Dennis Johnson. Dumars the pivotal it. game in the series, and Detroit is up by a point. Left side, Bird. Eyeball to eyeball with Mahorn, goes baseline, Rodman the block. They've got the ball out of bounds. It's in the hands of Isaiah Thomas. Out of bounds, who's got a Detroit ball with five seconds to go. All they've got to do is get it in and execute, and the game is over. I went back to a player, and I seen Lambeer go into the baseline, get the ball. And I thought a timeout was coming, because I knew they had a timeout left, they could advance the ball, but Isaiah gets it and throws a lob pass. Thomas wants to get it in quickly. That's Bird steals the ball. The Celtics win the game. Balcony is rocking and swaying right now. It's supposed to be made of steel. What a play by Larry Bird. So that is four straight trips to the finals in a period where he's winning all the league MVPs. If you look at our teams, four years in a row we went to the finals. The 87, that was when uh, Parrish had a sprained ankle. I think Danny and had a sprained ankle. I was, I was ankle. the healthiest one on the team. You were the only healthy one. In 87, we had... I was the healthiest one on the on the roster. <laughs> That's not saying much. Heading into the finals for the fourth straight year, the Celtics were the walking wounded. Bird was excellent, but the Lakers were simply too much. Boston was defeated, but Bird still had some magic left in his career. So I diagrammed the play. He says, heck with the play, Case. Give me the ball until all the rest of the guys get out of the way. I said, shut up, Larry. I'm the coach here. Okay, all right. Dennis, you take the ball out and give it to Kevin, then you throw it to Larry and everybody get the hell out of the way. He goes down. Uh, before the ball is thrown in and he's standing right in front of the bench and he looks at all the guys on the bench and says I'm getting the ball I'm going to put it in the hoop yeah that was that was it I mean how much did he talk right and where do we go all right it's going to go to Bird get it and it's got it the three point fail goal and that's that it's all over can you believe that can you believe it 
He hit a three-pointer with no time on the clock, and they win the ball game. Now, that's what you call arrogance. <laughs> he was a trash-talking icon. Larry was kind of standing outside behind him, like, denying him the ball. And uh, they called a timeout, and he turned around and looked at me and said, I'm going to score right here on you. Ten seconds. Five, and Bird has the basketball. I just looked back, and the ball just went in. Hit all net. And uh, he said, uh, I told you so. But the magic of Larry Bird... Uh, was not on the basketball court, was not in the locker room. It was in his ability to create an atmosphere, to create an atmosphere of excitement wherever he went. Aiming to win his third straight three-point contest, Bird famously walked into the locker room and asked a competition, which one of you is coming in second? I said it uh, just to break the ice. The truth that I meant it. I mean, I knew I was probably going to win the contest. Larry won again on the final shot. His third title in a row, back to back to back. After a, that seven-game war with Dominique, including the the that's the Dominique's most famous game, the Game Seven loss to Larry, where Larry scored twenty in the fourth quarter, and they move on. Bird kills you. Throughout his career. Larry had embodied the Boston grit, blue collar, hard work, toughness. So when injuries began to diminish Bird's playing time, it felt like the end of an era. How much longer do you think you're going to play? Well, Quinn, you know, I, me and you are probably the only ones that really talked about in depth, but um, it's really hard for me to say right now. Larry had two jobs his last seven years of playing. It was playing basketball, and then it was him being committed to taking care of his back. His 13th season with the Celtics, and lately those seasons have been difficult owing to both back and heel injuries. He's missed the Celtics' last eight games, and he won't be in uniform for their game later today against the Spurs. The final years of Larry's career was a story of never-ending injury. 13 years of hard work, sweat, toil, and pain produced fame and fortune for one Larry Joe Bird. In 88-89, you played like only six games, right. you were recovering. And then in 1989, it, he has bone spurs and back issues, and that's basically the end. But what an unbelievable 10-year run. Bird was forced to miss more and more time. After 13 seasons, Larry Legend's body could take no more. The show does not go on for Larry Bird. The Super Celtic has walked off the floor for the final time as a player. The chronic back problems forced his retirement. You know, I would like to play it a little bit longer, maybe a year or two more, but uh, there's just no way possible I was going to be able to do that. So today I'm retiring, and uh, I'm still going to be around, but uh, not in the capacity I once was. The words legend, great, best, they were used often, but maybe Pat Riley said it best. Pro basketball has just thrown away the mold. After 13 seasons at age 35, Larry Bird retired Tuesday in Boston. For his career, 24, 10, and 7 in the playoffs. Bird's number was hung in the rafters. But his basketball journey wasn't quite finished. For more than half a century, the U.S. was so dominant in basketball that its collegiate players were all that was needed to win the gold. And here's the frosting for the USSR. They win it. 76. Both other countries were using pros. Playing against 18, 19 year old kids. That is really unfair. After loss after loss for U.S. basketball at these. The Olympics would now allow professional athletes to compete for the first time, opening the door for the formation of a team. There was an idea called the Avengers Initiative. Moments ago, the Dream Team boarded the bus outside their hotel along the Romulus. I kept thinking that the attention would dissipate. They're going to play the first game. They're going to win by 60. A team 
unlike any other. A 6 6 guard, Michael Jordan. The guy on the bench is taking pitches. What may well be the best basketball team ever assembled. The dream team was assembled, and Larry Bird got one last moment in the sun. So suddenly the lead stretches to 15. <laughs> oh! The dream team is credited with bringing NBA basketball to the world. Hustle, number 14 with the score. An entire generation of kids in Europe watched the Dream Team in awe. Prior to the U.S. beating these teams by 60 points, they pose at midcourt. It's a watershed moment in the history of sports. Not just, not just the Olympics, not just basketball. The Olympics were a send-off to one of basketball's all-time greats. Yes, look at, look at these numbers. Uh, 31 straight points at one stretch. 46 to one run by the United States. It gave birth to international stars who had nothing to do with those games in 92. Arizona. The legend, Larry Bird. Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.